Hello, welcome to Coffee Break with Microchip Technology. Coffee Break is our forum to discuss trending topics and ideas of interest in about the amount of time it takes to drink a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, or your other favorite beverage. I'm your host, Eric Glattfelter. Before we dive into today's session, a note about our last session. For those of you who may have been watching, you probably noticed we had an interruption to our live stream several minutes into the session. So you know, we did record the full session. We pressed the reset button, backed up, and recorded the full session, and posted it online at microchip.com slash coffee break. So if that topic, timing and 5G networks, was of interest to you or is of interest to you, you can see the full content there. Should we, should we suffer the same type of interruption any time in the future, we will follow the same process which is we will record the full session and make sure that it is available online for you to see the content. All right, now let's move into today's session, which is design considerations for zero drift amplifiers. Joining us today is Kevin Treder, a product marketer here at Microchip Technology. Kevin, welcome to Coffee Break. Well, thank you, Eric, glad to be here. Also joining us is Jesse Nichols, Jesse, can you advise our audience how they can interact with us during the live stream today? Absolutely. Hello from the booth. Everything's looking great back here. Um, welcome everyone uh, watching the stream on YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. You can always contact us uh, by placing your questions in the chat. We have experts standing by to answer that. You can also ask a question at live stream at microchip.com. Um, and we'll answer those towards the end of the program. If you uh, follow us and like us, we'd be uh, very appreciative. Thank you. All right, so Kevin, maybe you can start us out by explaining the term zero drift and why a designer would consider using a zero drift amplifier versus a traditional amplifier. So the term zero drift is actually an industry standard term, and this refers to any amplifier that is continuously self-correcting for its input offset error. Now, this correction occurs thousands and thousands of times every second. So this lends itself to a lot of performance benefits. Obviously, you get extremely low initial offset voltage uh, error, but also that offset voltage uh, drift over time, over temperature is also very much minimized. In addition, I like to think of this as more of a, a physical conditions outside of the amplifier, uh, such as if your input common mode voltage begins to move around, if your supply voltage is changing, if the loading conditions on the amplifier changes. All of this is uh, could, could uh, adversely affect your input offset voltage error. However, by continuously correcting thousands and thousands of times every second, uh, these, these sorts of errors are also minimized. All right. So can you give us an overview of what the signal flow looks like inside the zero drift amplifier? Sure, so uh, one of the more common architectures is what's known as a chopper stabilized, and that's, that's uh, what we're showing here. There are two main sections that I'd like to point out. The first is the main amplifier, which is shown in green. Now this main amplifier is always connected to the inverting and non-inverting input pins of the amplifier. Now the design of this main amplifier is going to set your overall speed. So this will uh, affect your gain bandwidth product, your slew rate. All of that is determined by the design of that main amplifier. On the bottom, you're going to see some chopping switches, an auxiliary amplifier, and so forth, so on, some filtering. All of this is part of the correction path. And the whole point of this is to correct for the input offset error of that main amplifier. Now, it should be noted that this correction path runs much, much slower relative to the main amplifier. And that's going to be important as we look at some of the uh, design considerations coming up. All right. So let's get to those design considerations. First up, the input bias current and input offset current. What do designers need to know about the differences, again, between the zero drift amplifier and the traditional amplifier? So when we were talking about 
input bias current, input offset currents, it's important to uh, keep in mind the, the definition of these terms. So any amplifier is going to have current that is flowing into the inverting and non-inverting uh, input pins. Bias current is defined as the average of these two currents, while offset current is the difference between these two, uh, these two currents. So that, that definition is very important. Now with the standard uh, operational amplifier, let, let's take a, a CMOS input uh, amplifier, for example, typically the, uh, the two input pins are very well matched because this is, this is determined by how well matched the uh, input pairs are for that amplifier. So generally, your input offset current is going to be very, very small down in the femtoamps and can typically be ignored when it comes to, say, your, uh, uh, your overall error budget for your, for your circuit. Now, for a zero drift amplifier, that might not be the case. So what we're showing here is the MCP6V06 instrumentation amplifier. I'm sorry, a zero drift amplifier. Uh, and you see the, the two uh, currents that are flowing in and out of the uh, input pins of that amplifier. Now, if you take the average of the two, which again is the definition of bias currents, it's pretty small, around six picoamps. However, if you look at the difference, which is the offset current, uh, it's, it's significant or can be significant. Uh, and uh, this amount of uh, current offset could, could affect your overall air budget. Now, why is this? Well, it's because of the zero drift architecture itself. And due to those uh, chopping switches that are connected to the input pins, this, uh, this uh, enables additional leakage paths for that input current, which is why you're going to see uh, higher offset currents and, and possibly higher bias currents for a zero drift amplifier. All right, so another design consideration will be the noise profile. What do we need to know about the noise profile in the frequency domain between the two architectures? So if you look at uh, uh, typical noise profiles, uh, what we're showing here for say a traditional operational amplifier shown in red, there's two main regions within this noise profile. Out in frequency, you have the white noise of the amplifier. And this is relatively flat over frequency. At low frequency, you have what's known as 1 over F for flicker noise, which becomes the dominant noise source. Now, this will rise at about uh, 20 dBs per octave. And this is inherent to all electronics. So, so all electronics are, are subject to this, uh, this flicker noise. Where it really becomes problematic is if you have a low-level input signal. And I, I, by saying low-level, I mean not only low uh, amplitude, but also uh, if talking low frequency, where this 1 over F noise is dominant, uh, trying to extract that signal in the presence of all of this noise can be very problematic. So this is one of the benefits of a zero drift architecture. The continuously self-correcting nature of these amplifiers not only corrects out the offset error, but this one over F noise, since it's a fairly slow moving error signal, this also gets corrected out. That's why you see for a zero drift operational amplifier, your noise floor is flat all the way down to DC. Now, another aspect of the zero drift that I like to point out when you're talking about the noise profile is you will see a hump out in frequency. Now, this is called uh, noise peaking and is inherent to the, uh, to the actual architecture. You'll also see a, 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 a pulse there. And, and what this is is clock feed through, again, from the uh, correction circuitry with all these chopping switches and whatnot that are, uh, that are opening and closing. This is going to cause some, uh, some clock feed through as well. The good news, though, is that typically for a zero drift operational amplifier, you're going to be using these in a fairly high closed loop gain, uh, generally for, for trying to, to capture uh, low frequency signals. So this uh, noise peaking and, and associated uh, clock tones and whatnot can, can typically be very easily filtered out. Right. Thanks, Kevin. So we can't talk about the frequency domain without also talking about everybody's favorite domain, the time domain. Uh, what do we, what do we, our designers need to know about uh, the, the time domain? Right. So when it comes to a standard operational amplifier versus a zero drift operational amplifier, time domain can be another consideration. What we're showing here is a, a, a step function on your, your input to the uh, operational amplifier. So that's shown in red with your, your input taking a, a step, a large step function. Now, what the amplifier is going to do, it wants that output to try to match that input. So initially, the amplifier is going to be slew limited. This is true if it's a standard op amp or a, or a zero drift op amp. But where the difference comes is as that output approaches that input uh, voltage level, for a zero drift amplifier, you're now relying on the slower moving uh, correction signal path that we talked about earlier uh, in order to hone in that output voltage within the uh, offset error limits of that amplifier. 
So what this amounts to is that uh, you, your, your settling time for a zero drift operational amplifier is going to be much, much longer versus, say, a standard uh, amplifier, all, all else being considered equal, uh, because, of again, you're relying on that very slow-moving um, correction circuit. All right. Well, thanks, Kevin, for that great overview. Uh, Jesse, are there questions from the audience today? Let me see here. Uh, yeah, we do have a question here. Um, the diagram you showed specifically mentions chopper stabilized. Does that imply there are other types of zero drift architectures? So yes, there, there are other architectures. Another uh, fairly common one is known as auto zero. Uh, now this is based on a sample and hold architecture. So uh, your input pins aren't always connected to the main amplifier. Uh, there's some other uh, hybrid approaches that can that combine both a zero drift approach as well as a chopper stabilized, uh, or I'm sorry, chopper stabilized as well as auto zeroing. Uh, but it should be noted that regardless of what the actual architecture is inside the chip, uh, all of the design considerations that we discussed today still apply. All right. Looks like we've got one uh, that came in on the uh, live stream email here. Um, are there certain applications or conditions in which this higher offset and or bias current will be problematic or more problematic rather. Yeah, so where this becomes a, a factor if you're talking bias currents or offset currents is as this current flows through a resistance, this creates a, an additional offset voltage error for your, for your sensor uh, signal conditioning. So if you have a high input impedance, uh, that's where the uh, higher bias current or higher offset currents could become a, a, a factor. So some examples, uh, pH meters, for example, are inherently have a very high output uh, impedance. Uh, oven oscillators is another example of an application that uh, where, again, bias currents and offset currents could, could play a, a factor in the overall air budget. Okay. Um, we do have a little bit of a shy audience, looks like today, um, but I do have a question here on white noise. Um, they're referring to the slide that we showed before. The graph indicates the non-zero drift amplifier will have lower noise. Is that always true? So the graph that we showed today, was, this was actually a, a measured results from from to showing this graph was to show the uh, the general profile or shape of the noise floor, not so much the absolute value. Uh, so it, it is possible to find a zero drift operational amplifier that has a lower noise floor versus a traditional amplifier and, and vice versa. So it really depends on a lot of uh, factors outside of the, uh, the architecture that's been implemented. Okay, either you did a fantastic job of explaining everything or uh, we have a shy audience. But either way, um, if you have additional questions, you can always send them to livestream at microchip.com. Our experts will always get back to you on those. And don't forget to like and subscribe us, uh, like and subscribe to us. Um, back to you guys. All right, thanks, Jesse. Thanks, Kevin, for sharing your expertise with us today. And most of all, thank you to our audience for taking some time out of your day um, to listen to design considerations for zero drift amplifiers. Uh, please visit us at microchip.com slash coffee break. There you can see our upcoming schedule with uh, the topics listed. You can subscribe for updates and you can add individual events to your calendar to ensure that you do not miss them. So again, we, uh, we thank you for your time. We hope that this has been helpful to you as you gather information and knowledge and work every day to create something great. Thank you, good day.